Do y'all remember the beginning of this year? I did an intro where I was like trying to see if um, 2021 was going to come in here and start some mess. The end of the year is really just, um, she's coming for us and I'm shook. <laughs> so <laughs> let's stay safe and let's get into it. Take 32. What's good, peacemakers? Welcome back to another episode of the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast. I'm Michael, and this is my crafty corner of the YouTube verse. If you would like to follow me on other social medias, you can do that. I am on Instagram as Peace for Peace Crafting, uh, Ravelry as Peace for Peace Craft. And if you like music and you want to jam out with us, there is a communal playlist over on Spotify at the Peace for Peace Crafting Podcast Playlist. Piece for piece crafting is all one word. Podcast playlist, two separate words. Uh, I think that's all the places you can find me <laughs> for now. <laughs> How is everyone doing? Are you stressed? The holidays are among us and people are furiously making things from what I see on the onlines. I've been not stuck just in a theater um, with our production going. It's been really hectic and crazy trying to put up a show uh, during a pandemic, <laughs> to say the least. Uh, but things are going good, shows have been well, um, kids have been great, the companies looked beautiful. So that's awesome. Uh, I'm coming to you a little bit later, just trying to find time in my busy schedule to actually make these episodes happen. I wanted to record on Monday. Here we are. Actually, I don't even know what day it is. Is it Thursday? Is it Wednesday? I think it's Thursday. The 23rd, possibly. Who knows? Of December 2021. <laughs> time means nothing anymore. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I have been a little bit busy making some makes, and so I really truly this time feel like this episode is gonna be a little bit shorter, um, but I wanted to pop in before the end of the year just to give a last episode um, for the year since it should have been last weekend. Anyway, uh, so let's get into it. <laughs> the first thing that I have to show. I actually don't have to show, but I will put a photo here. Um, so a few of us at work, we decided that we wanted to do a craft exchange and that could be any craft that you participate in. So if you, if you knit, if you crochet, if you weave, if you embroider, if you cook, whatever, let's do a little craft exchange. And so we had to purchase things Oh, no, not purchasing. We had to make something for the person we were giving to. So I made another uh, Bois de Cologne, Cologne hat. Um, the hat is by uh, Jean-Philippe Cliche. I've made a f two of them so far, so this is my third. And uh, it was awesome. My recipient loved it. He was really appreciative of it. I got him some other fun little things to go inside of the gifts bag. Um, and for this one, I used... Uh, I had some leftover um, pitchfork fiber yarn from my Vertices Unite in the color April Showers. <clears throat> Excuse me, and I paired that with the with um, the plover color of the Knit Picks Aloft um, mohair to make the hat. Uh, the person really likes pastels, and it's, it was so interesting using that like lightish gray mohair with the 
um, brightness of the the blue and the yarn together it really muted the colors of the April showers and made for a really lovely pastel colored hat super excited with how it turned out and happy that the recipient enjoyed it as well honestly like I wear mine all the time like it's kind of Mm -hmm. it's like mother nature can't decide what she wants to do here in Chicago <laughs> and so some days it's really cold and then other days like I think on Christmas Eve it's supposed to be 52 here which is like what is that um so yeah when it like dips down I'm like I put my hat on and it's so warm and cozy that like yeah it does the the air outside doesn't really bother me <laughs> so that's great Highly recommend, two thumbs up, 10 out of 10. All right, the next thing that I have to show is I finished, don't judge, you all know how I feel about weaving in ends, is I finished the uh, grounded poncho. Now this is a pattern, I've shown it before, um, from Denise Byron of Byron Handmade. Definitely check her out if you haven't already. Her patterns are amazing. This was a ponchette, so it was almost like a little dicky that was in um, issue 10, I wanna say, of Lina Magazine. And it was finally released as an individual pattern. And there was a little hack in there to make it a poncho. So I decided I was gonna make a poncho. This is a gift. Um, so here it is. So here's side one, this beautiful lace. Oh, sorry. All of this is, <laughs> all the yarn is uh, Knit Picks High Desert, which is in the worsted. And do I have the bag here? And uh, so I ordered a bunch of it. Well, they sent me a bunch of it to try. And so here are the colors. So there's this black, which is Lava Lake. Oh no, Lava Fields. And then this cream color, which is Cottonwood. And the last color was this like taupey beige color. Oh, and I don't have the tag for it. Do I have, oh, and it's called Quail. These are all worsted weight. It's 217 yards for 100 grams and uh, it's just 100% wool, and it's fabulous. It's super soft. Um, I have a lot left over because I went off of, I went off of um, what was in the pattern, what she used to make hers, and yeah, I just had a lot left over. I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do all of the, the yardage, and I'll get it, and then depending on my gauge because the hack is a little is a little choose your own adventure but not it makes sense if you get the pattern so i did this on a us7 and so here's the first side this beautiful zigzag lace which is really lovely i still have to weave in my ends and the other side is this beautiful black and it's this seed stitch. Oh, that picks up kind of nice. You all, I'm using a new camera. So let me know if things look busted. <laughs> um, and I think that this turned out super, super well. Um, here, I can even, let's try to put it on and not make too much noise with this mic. So I made the size five that's in the pattern. Um, and I still had a bunch of yarn left over. The great thing is, is you can keep going if you want, or you can make it smaller if you need to. And that's really awesome. So I'm just going to show it with, oh my gosh, this is giving me so much yes. So for me, um, I'm six foot and the sleeve comes just below my elbow. Or not the sleeve, the edge of it. You know what I mean. Comes just below my elbows. So for the person I'm giving it to who is shorter than me, it will um, 
fit them a little bit longer, which is really awesome. I had my roommate try this on and she was like, oh, this is so cool because like, I feel like I can, I'm doing this a lot. I feel like I can still move my arms and the garment isn't getting in the way. And that's the whole point <laughs> of it, I think, uh, is to not get in the way. I can't gush enough about the yarn. I think it's really beautiful. I was really happy that um, I was able to try it. So shout out to Nitpicks for sending it to me so that I could try. And when I stand up, it hits me like just below my waist. I'm not gonna stand up now because I don't wanna knock things over. Um, so I think it's a great size for doing the size five. And I'm obsessed. Like, I'm, like I put it on. <laughs> I put it on and my immediate thought was, not Denise out here having me thinking I need a poncho for myself. Like, I personally m might rock this. <laughs> Oh, don't fall over, friend. Um, but, like I wouldn't. But maybe. Who knows? Time will tell. In two episodes, I'll be like, I'm making one for myself. Here it is. Uh, so yeah, if you haven't already, please go and check out the grounded pattern. And make one for yourself. Make one for someone. It actually doesn't... Like if this were my only project, I would say that it knits up pretty fast because you're using a worsted weight yarn. Um, but I wasn't, I was doing multiple things at once. So it took me a couple weeks. Mm, yeah, a few weeks, a few weeks to actually get the project done. But as with all of Denise's patterns, they're so beautifully written and the look, the finished product is chef's kiss. We love. Um, all right, I'm gonna take this off so that I don't ruin it. Not that I could ruin it just sitting here, but you know what I mean. It's also a little warm in our apartment today. So those are my two finished objects. Really excited about that. Excited to weave in those ends and send that off um, to the recipient very soon. They'll get it after the holidays, but like, it's fine, whatever. Uh, okay, next up are a couple whips that I have. And where to start? I'll start here. So I showed this last time and actually I didn't get to work on it as much as I really wanted to because just life has been busy. And that is, oh, I didn't bring the book in here. I've shown it before. This is the, the Kinship Shawl. It's by Olga, who's Olga Jazzy Knits, and Stephen West. It was a collaboration that they did for the 35th, question mark, parenthetically, uh, issue of Pom Pom Magazine. And it's a beautiful shawl pattern. I made one earlier in the year. I had a make-along for it. Um, and my aunt went shopping on my Instagram and asked if she could get one, and I said, I said, sure. Uh, so I am using, all this yarn is Knit Picks, and it's the Capretta, um, which is their, um, why can't I think of words? Their Merino Cashmere Nylon base, so it's an 80-10-10, and um, the main color is this Eclipse, which I'm just using on its own. It's called Eclipse Heather. And then I'm pairing that with, sorry, I'm just trying to take the balls out. Um, this plover aloft and this white color are two together. The white was a little bit too stark for my liking. So I'm adding the plover, which low key, I've used this plover color like a number of times now. And I think it's my favorite. <laughs> just gonna say that. It just looks so good with like everything I've used it with. And then um, the other color is this Moonstone Heather, and I am using, let me see if I can find the other ball of mohair in this bag. Uh, silver, so these two, this is a little bit darker. Um, with the silver, oh, that's upside down. Um, <laughs> uh, is darkening it up just a little bit. So, those are my colors. Oh, and this is also living in this stunning, as this slaps me in the face. This beautiful, beautiful sister bag, which 
now it sounds weird saying beautiful, beautiful, but it's a gorgeous <laughs> bag from Beautiful Sister. Everything will be linked below. Go check out their shop. They have amazing project bags. So here is where I am on that. I got another two sections done since the last time you saw. So the last time I was, I just completed this little motif. And since then I did another one of the little garter ridges and the second, ah, the second section. And actually this morning I started the next little, I wanted to just get the increases out of the way of the next garter section. And yeah, you can see like the white isn't as just like stark, I guess, in your face because I'm holding it with the plover and the moonstone heather with the silver um, is a little bit darker too. Now, if I hold it this, just the fuzziness of it all is everything. I kind of, I kind of don't want to give this away, but <laughs> I know that my aunt will love it. Uh, working up this pattern for a second time, I have to say I love it even more um, because I haven't had a chance to um, really just sit down and work on just this because I've been working on a couple of things, like I was finishing stuff. I had to get that hat done in like three days because of course I waited till the last minute to actually be like, oh yeah, I have to make something for this thing. Time crept up on me. Um, yeah, I it's just like re-remembering how much I loved doing it the first time around. So like this time, I'm just like, oh yes, zipping through whenever I actually sit down and work on it. Um, it's kind of been in the mornings, like with coffee, just watching my local news, which sounds a little bit boring, but that's how we've been waking up lately. So again, this is the, the kinship. I'm obsessed. I'm probably... Not probably. I'm going to do the large version. There's two versions. So I have um, a garter section, a, two garter sections, and two more of the motifs to go. And then this will be done. And since uh, there's going to be a little bit of time off coming up, I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to get some really good headway on this um really soon once the shows are over gotta love those winter breaks <laughs> if you have them if not i'm i'm sorry um but for me um the winter break is i'm excited for it so that's my kinship absolutely loving it second time around okay now i'm whispering kind of even though my roommates are gone uh, I've been doing a secret project, which is my second whip, and it's for one of my roommates. Uh, again, in true me fashion, I waited until uh, 11 days before Christmas <laughs> to start this, but I was seeing people online, especially, um, oh, I can't remember their handle now, but another Caleb, um, and he had made a bunch of these really quick, like, oh, made this in four days, and I'm like, okay, I got this, I can do this too. So, you all, what I'm doing is, I'm very excited. Don't judge me, you probably can't see this, but I'm making a love note for my roommate. So excited. Downloaded the pattern have been like secretly making this. So like after they leave, I leave a little bit later than them because I don't have to be to the theater as soon as they do because like they got to take class, warm up all that jazz. And um, at the theater, like um, there's like little areas where like the, the dancers don't really pass by very much. And like on the bus while I'm commuting, but like I can't work on it <laughs> in the house when they're home. So, Let's do colors first. I'm using, this is basically the nitpick show today. I'm using 
it and kind of this is my favorite uh fingering weight from knit picks i'm deciding right here right now with you all so i'm using again the Knit Picks Capretta, and this is in Magnolia Heather. So it's this beautiful sort of like mauvey purple. And I'm pairing it with the um, Sydney Hand Painted. So this is like a variegated mohair, which I know I've seen like people knit this up with like a variegated yarn and then like a plain colored mohair. And maybe like, and honestly, you all, on if you if Ravelry is accessible to you, there's like almost nine thousand project pages for this. So like, clearly, I haven't gone through all of them. I'm sure someone's used it, used a variegated <laughs> mohair, but in the ones that I looked at for the size I was doing, I was like, oh, I don't see any of this. So I'm using these two together. Now I did my swatch, which I think is in this bag. I'm, it's everything's been in this um, Fringe Supply Co. bag that I have. I did my swatch here and I wasn't really feeling the stripes that were happening. And I learned, cause I know some people like don't want to swatch, which that's cool. Um, I like to just because I don't want, I need to like not be as surprised. So what I learned is um, the stripes were gonna annoy me and <laughs> I think I put this in my Instagram story. And I should probably go up a needle size, but I like the fabric that this is making. And so I just kept, um, I'm just doing it on the recommended, which is a US 10 um, for the bulk of the sweater. So it'll be a little, just a pinch bigger, which I don't mind um, after it's blocked. Because I think that's the vibe that she will like anyway. So here let me find the front here is what happened now oh i can't even there is still oh this looks so cute some pooling and it like does a little stripe around which i don't think i mind and a little bit oh no it's the same on the other side so because um because I didn't, I wanted to like try to avoid that as much as possible. I was alternating like the, the mohair every round. So like switching between two, but then keeping the main color the whole time. And um, I guess it still happened, <laughs> clearly. So whatever, it's fine. This is a tin can knits pattern. It's been knit up a bajillion times, so I'm sure people have seen this. It has this really gorgeous lace, which you can kind of see um, for the top. And then you do a little bit of shaping before you separate for the sleeves. And then you just go, go, go. And I'm doing the full version, which I just went to what they said in the pattern, and I'm like, ugh, this doesn't look like it's gonna be a full top, but trust the pattern. It still hasn't been blocked, whatever. And I've never done this on a sweater before because uh, they're not the kind of sweaters that I wear. But I do like how the ba the back of it is sits a little bit lower. So I guess it's the same as if you were doing the short row shaping for the neck up top, it's just done on the bottom um, to make the back a little bit longer. And then because I am a little bit lazy, uh, for the bind off, I held, since you were supposed to bind off loosely, I held both the mohairs and the main color together to do the bind off. So it's you can sort of tell a little bit, it's a little bit thicker. Let me do it this way. It's a lit, no, you can't tell at all. <laughs> it's a little bit thicker, but um, I think it's fine. And then everything's all together for me at the end and I can just weave in those three as one. So I'm really excited about this. I have two days, you all, two, two days to try to bang out the sleeves and the neckline, which I think I can probably do. Because in the pattern, I think they're like bracelet length sleeves. Um, 
so that shouldn't take me too long and the collar I already I was reading ahead um, shouldn't take me long either now I'm not opposed to giving this to them still on the needles which I think she would not care and I actually might do that and I was gonna also give it to her without like the ends woven in just so she could try it on and we can get a better fit right so like if it if she wants a little bit more length i can just undo it add a little bit more length same thing with those sleeves get them as far as i possibly can and say okay where would you like these to stop and then just finish them um the rest of christmas day while we're just hanging out in the apartment um yeah we're very chill and relaxed over here so i'm super excited about this it's true what people say it does knit up really fast i love the fabric that it's making i feel like it's going to be very light and airy and she's going to look awesome in it so can't wait for that i hope she likes it i think the striping the little pooling is fine it's whatever it's cute we loves it it's like a little a little purple candy cane yeah love 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 so that's been my second thing that I've been plowing away on. And that's it, knit-wise. Is that true? Yeah, that's kind of it. Um, knit-wise. I have a couple more things to show. Uh, so earlier, I talked about how I did this craft exchange at work. So this is gonna be a little bit of piecemeal. We did a craft exchange at work, and my person, there's going to be slight crinkling just as I pull a couple things out. My person is also a knitter. I'm not going to show one of the things. It's a plant holder. I love it. It's really cute. Um, and so one of the things that she got me, in addition to the plant holder, was some soak. Now, I've never tried this. Um, I usually use eucalyptus. But this smells good and I'm excited to try it. It's the celebration um, scent. And also this Katya, I think, yarn, which is a 7525. Um, so 75 wool, 25 polyamide. And where's the little, I don't know what, oh, the yardage is on this a lot <laughs> because you can make socks with it so this is really dope never heard of this brand before super excited obviously it's gonna stripe so that'll be neat to see what this looks like but then because we had to make something she <laughs> embroidered cross-stitched you guys, I started cackling in the office when I opened this. She made a little thing for me that says, nope. <laughs> Hilarious. This will probably sit on my desk at work, cause that's funny. Um, but I absolutely love it. And, oh, if you can see, oh, the window is reflecting. They're like little hearts. I'm crying, that's so cute. Love that. Um, so that was such a fun little, move this away from the mic as much as I can. That was such a fun little thing to do at work. Okay, second thing of piecemeal I got was uh, a bunch of friends and I from our Thursday night knit group. Um, some of us did a skein exchange and where you just like pick a skein, pick a skein from stash and send it to whoever you drew in the thing. And so the person who had me sent me, uh, which I just can't even, um, a skein of their hand spun. They just started spinning too. So this is Falkland wool and it's um, about a fingering weight. Can we just look at how beautiful this is? Ooh, I can't even. So I'm so excited to add this to my hand spun stash. I think in 2022, which is so weird to say, I'm sure you all might feel the same way. Um, 
I'm so excited. I think in 2022, I really want to start using the hand spun that I have or like trying to use it. Like I've been opening that advent, the fiber advent that I have that was gifted to me. And I should have brought some of the new colors in here because they're really good. Maybe I'll do that um, for the next episode, the start of the new year. Um, like I want to spin all of those and then make something with it because like one, it's a fiber advent and never didn't know that that was a thing until recently. And two, I feel like I should be using the stuff that I'm actually spinning up. And yes, I recognize that like uh, spinning the fiber and knitting with the fiber are two completely different hobbies. Uh, but yeah, I just, I, I want to, I want to, I want to do that. So this was sent to me. Absolutely love. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot wait to use this. This is so beautiful. And then you all, okay. So picture it. I'm in the theater. I go upstairs to give the kids some notes from their previous show. And one of the moms who was volunteering that show was knitting something we love, right? So of course, I have to be like, oh, what are you making? Like, and she's like, oh, I'm making this thing for my mom. I'm like, oh, that's so cool. The yarn's so beautiful. She's like, I actually spun it. And I was like, get out of here. Like, I just started spinning. That's so awesome. And we just, we had a little chat about it because fibery people, that's what we do. And so then the next show, her child was in the show. The next show, I go up and I'm with that group again. And her daughter comes up to me and she's like, hey, I just wanted you, I wanted to give you this. It's from my mom. Um, she said that you guys were talking about knitting and spinning and she sent me, or she sent her along with these Rolex. You all, I, I'm gonna try to delicately pull one out. So first of all, never use a Rolag before, have seen them and wanted to, but they have tinsel in them, so they're sparkly. And I showed it to my roommate, I like went in, into his dressing room and I was like, oh my gosh, like look at this, this is so cool. He was like, it looks like the snow scene in the show. And I was like, oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. So this is, this is wool from, Randmade Hollows? Handmade Hollow? Handmade Hollows. Goodness, can I read cursive? Um, so this is their little tag. And this says that the fiber content is Thin Marine. I don't know if there's a comma here. Thin Merino, Tooney, Firestar, and Angelina. And now this person doesn't know that I uh, have a channel here on YouTube or like an Instagram where we do crafty things, but the colorway, the colorway is called peace. Can you even? The universe knew. So I'm going to have to weigh this out because th this was like literally all I got in the bag. But it's so beautiful and it's really sparkly <laughs> and I'm completely shook. And I can't wait to actually try spinning from a Rolag. That's gonna be so boss. Very excited about that. Um, okay, I think, <laughs> I think that might be it for all of the ness of it all. Um, I'm doing one last look. Yes, I think that's it. All right, you all, so that's it. This will be my last episode for 2021. The next time I see you all, it will be after the new year. It'll probably be, I think, like if I'm getting back on schedule, I'm supposed to put out a podcast on the first of the year, which that may or may not happen. So it might be the second. We'll see how I feel on the first. Um, yeah, we'll see how I feel on the first. <laughs> but uh, until then, oh, I don't have a music rec for you all this episode. I was trying to think of like what holiday things I could, I could recommend. And I always come back to a Charlie Brown Christmas. So go put on a Charlie Brown Christmas 
And even if you don't celebrate, it's great music. <laughs> so just go and put it on and jam out, ch not jam out, chill out to that soundtrack because it's just so beautiful. It's literally my all time favorite, like wintry vibes music. Um, yeah, this is crazy. It's been another year, calendar year, I should say. Um, and the next time I will see you all will be in 2022. So until then, I hope everyone stays safe and uh, gets all the crafting that they want done for the holidays. And even if you don't, don't be hard on yourself. It is okay. We are literally making things with our hands and it's okay if things don't get done. We're not machines. Don't stress out about it. Uh, just don't stress out about it. Um, and I hope however you celebrate all of the winter holidays, you um, do so with a lot of joy and uh, love around you. I know, and I've seen other people talking about this too, and I recognize it as well, that this time of year, while is a lot of people tell us that it's supposed to be joyous, um, can be a little bit difficult for people too. And so we wanna extend love and kindness to those who might need a little extra boost or a hug or just a phone call and a text during the wintry uh, holidays time of year really because where I am the sun likes to play games um, so yes I'm thinking about people I want everyone to just like know that I'm giving everyone a virtual hug and I'm there with you um, cheering you on and whatever it is you're doing or cheering you up if you need cheering up so until next time, everyone, have a safe rest of the year and I'll see you, oh my gosh, in 2022. Uh, and <laughs> until then, don't forget, make a peace, spread some peace, peace.